One moment here. Okay. So, uh, good morning. My name is Julie. I'm one of the nurses here at Royal Inland Hospital. I've been pulled in to do physician education and support on the physician system, um, something that I'm quite interested in. So I'm happy to uh, see you today. Today we're going to be doing a superficial overview of many of the different functions in the system. So please bear with me. I am going to be doing sort of a lot of talking at you. I do ask that you please hold off on your questions till the end of the session. There is a dedicated Q&A time that is put aside and I very well may cover your question at some point throughout the session. So uh, bear with me as I have requested uh, and thank you. Um, please keep your mute on mic unless you do need to use it in which uh, at which point you're more than welcome to unmute and ask your questions or interact as needed. Um, it just helps with interference and background noise over here. So thank you. Um, the other preface I want to give is I will be taking a screenshot of our participant list about halfway through the session. Um, if you are not on site and being paid for your time already, please be sure to submit a uh, staffing form to your supervisor to be paid for your time. Um, this is just a request to confirm attendance, but you do need to do a separate form if you are not on site. So, um, as you can see here, we have our sign on page. We're going to launch a new session. Bear with me, there is a little bit of a lag in the test system. We'll go ahead and sign on. And I just like to point out here that you can change your pin on this screen. If you do not know it, if you can't remember it, if you want to change it, uh, this is a good spot to do that. You just need your network password that you use to sign on to the computer. For now, we're going to go into the hospital by clicking on the Web Acute Status Board. All right, this is cleared. So thank you for bearing with me. So um, when you open your system, it is going to open to what is called a rounds view. And the uh, layout of the system is fairly predictable. So you do have your name down here in bold. The patient's location and bed number are over here. You have their MRN here or their PHN here, I believe, their date of birth, age, sex. You have their admission diagnosis here in bold and then their length of stay. So this poor person has been here for a few years while the system wasn't built. Next to your admission diagnosis here, you have your um, special indicators. I believe there are 11 or 12 of them. Um, so this patient is a renal patient. That includes other things like if they have a most, if they have an aggressive alert, a uh, cardiac implanted device, emergency department care plan. Um, as I said, I believe there's 11 or 12. There's quite a few. Uh, they would show up here. Next to that, you have your MRP. So this one is under the preceptor team. And then you have your yellow sticky, which is for your rough notes. You just click on that and you can enter whatever you like here. As it says in the bottom here, there's um, this comment is not part of the electronic record, so it's not going to be filed anywhere. But it is visible to other providers who have this patient on their rounds view. Um, so this is not confidential to the clinician. Uh, other clinicians can see it if this patient is in their rounds list or assigned to them for a consult. Um, having said that, I do not believe nursing can see this. So this is just for providers here. Um, next to this, there would be a little bubble if there was a hold queue or a transfer order module that had been created. Um, and then here you have your team. So for example, the teams here, like the hospitalist team, they have uh, seven hospitalist teams and then a nurse practitioner team, and that al allocation is here. 
um, whoever is the, I'm not sure what the term is, but the hospitalist in charge each morning will come in and assign that allocation for any of the admits that came in the night prior. Um, and I will show you guys how the hospitalists build their coverage list here. Over here, you have a sort of widget that will bold and turn black if there's any new data for any of the associated headers. If there's any critical data, it's going to turn red. Um, and you'll see that again in another view that I'll show you in just a few minutes here. Over here, you have your workload pane. Unfortunately, I don't have any items right there to show you, um, but this is where you have your consults, you have your messages, and then you would also have any administrative alerts from the system. So, for example, errant drafts that require signing or pinning off uh, or messages about conflicts from the system. The workload is also up here. Unfortunately, it works in that each item, if you click on it, you have to dismiss them one by one. So some folks do find it tedious, but I do have some clinicians who actually really like this feature. Um, so it is what you make of it. Over here, if you click on this feature here, this is your recently accessed list. So in real life, when you have real names, um, this will be a lot easier to navigate. You can go to any of the charts that you recently have been in, um, whether they're in your rounds list, if they're consults, whatever, this will be listed here. It's a helpful tool. Otherwise, you can find your patient using the search function here. This is just your handy refresh button, so that will refresh your EMR. Um, I'd like to bring your attention over here to this little guy. So when there is only one person here, this indicates that this is my rounds list. These are my patients. If I would like to build my coverage and apply to cover my buddies uh, rounds list, I'm going to come click on this little guy and go to edit coverage in which uh, at which time I can go here in this provider tab and search by provider. I can also search teams. So for instance, I can do hospitalist. Oh, EKH, don't want that. As you can see, if you select something, it's green, but you can just click on it and deselect it. So hospitalist, we'll choose the RH group and then let's do receptor web test. As I said, the hospitalists work in groups, so they come down here to the provider team where they can select whichever group they want to cover. Once they have applied to that coverage, they can click save. And now that's changed to two people here. Uh, so you can see that I'm covering my buddy and this is their list of patients. As you can see, there are some results here that need to be addressed. Buddy has been lazy. Uh, there's some hold cues here and some notes here. So this is a little bit uh, more indicative of what a real life system will look like. Uh, none of my other patients actually had most. So as you see, that is listed here before the MRP. If I want to get out of my friends list, I'm just going to come back to my two guys here and go to high coverage and then it goes back to my list. You see the number of patients changes here. Great. So um, we are ready to go in and do some order entry. So I'm going to actually go into this chart here. Once I've selected it, as you can see, it's gone green. That means it's selected. And then I can come up here to what I call my action bar and I can click on any of these headers and, and do any of these actions. So I can go into the chart, I can go right into document, I can go right into order entry, or I can go right in and work on my discharge plan. So we're just going to go in and look at the chart first. So the idea is that this built this is built to kind of visually replicate the physical system that we followed with tabs, which is very familiar to a lot of our clinicians. A lot of these are fairly straightforward as to what content would be buried beneath there. Um, we will go over how to navigate some of the data in the chart 
uh, later. As you can see, this is kind of a bare chart. There is nothing really loaded here, so we're not gonna see much. It opens to your summary tab, and this is an interesting one to look at. So this is what we call widgets here. I'm just gonna come up here and go to this button. These are pretty consistent throughout the system. I call them accordion buttons, and this will just collapse all the content in these fields and give me headers. So for me, I find that a little bit uh, of a visual clutter. I like to have just a simple view, and I find these guys pretty helpful. Next to this is another feature which is fairly consistent in the system, and that is the cog wheel. And that's generally where you can come and change your settings in any area. So here's one here. Uh, you can change settings up here for your chart or your view. So we're going to go to the cog wheel for our summary tab here. At which point it opens a dialog box where you can adjust any widgets in here. Uh, you can delete widgets, you can move them around, up and down, you can go right to the top or right to the bottom. I'm going to go left because I like that to be even. Um, you can search by type and I have asked for a library of these widgets to be provided. At this point I don't have one so generally what I do is I'll put in a couple letters from any sort of term that I'm looking for. So if I was looking for any type of blood studies I would do BLO and then it would open any of the associated widgets that exist. Uh, if I want that, I can just click on it and then move it around. I can also go in and edit the title. So um, this is, I just want to name this CBC. I'm happy with that. And now you can see the title has changed. We're going to delete that. And anytime you do any changes in your system, you generally want to save them. So we're going to hit save. And now any edits would show up here. So this is a very highly customizable area. It is worth a little bit of investigation to customize it, especially for specialists. Um, they can make it so that they have all the uh, content that they usually prefer to see right away, right on the screen. So super helpful. Again, I'm going to collapse that. Over here on the right, this is a static pane on all charts. It's always the same. You cannot edit it. We're going to use our accordion button here and collapse that to see all the headings. So you have your patient's name, uh, age, date of birth, health care number, MRN here. You have their location and bed here. I always recommend taking a peek when you open a chart over just to make sure you have the right person um, and that you also have the right account. So many times when uh, clinicians are having issues with order entry or providing documents where the system has kind of locked them out from those features, it's probably because they're in the wrong location. Oftentimes with our direct admits or um, people coming for daycare surgery or, or um, uh, transfers from other facilities, if there is a bolded pre-admit or admit file in another facility, it's going to automatically open to that account. So to change that, you just come on over and click on the account number. <clears throat> it's like our current visit view in our current module. Uh, you can click on whichever visit you want. Visit registrations and visit types are definitely, for most of our clinicians, a new skill. So this is definitely an area where lots of problems um, are, especially in things like uh, daycare surgery or pre-admit or pre-clinic file. If people have open files and different registrations, this can be confusing. So um, an area for um, ex exploration and uh, mastery for sure. We're just going to keep our current bolded KA number. I know it's Kamloops because it's a KA. That's your little indicator there that you're on the right track. Uh, below that account number, you have sort of the Google for your chart here. Um, we're going to go back out of this blank chart and come to my populated one so I can actually get something back on this for you guys. As you can see, this has more data in it than our blank person. So you can use this to search um, lab results if you want. 
Um, if you click on that top one, it's going to bring you to all the previous results. Uh, you have your nomogram up here. You can look at previous orders here, which is not working in the test system, unfortunately. Sometimes the live system is a, a bit different. This is where they do their building. So um, you can search OT. I'm not sure if there's anything on this chart for OT. Uh, no, I don't think so. Mm, but there are other things. Let's see if there's any PT. No PTT respiratory. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this panel. And there's a PCR with a report here. Anytime there's a report, it creates sort of like a little paper document that you can click on. And then you could open that report here. So that, that is the function of that little area there. Again, we're going to get out of that populated chart. I don't like messing around with it. So <clears throat> below that little sort of Google feature, you have these widgets over here. Again, these are not customizable. These are static on every single chart. It's always the same thing. So your special indicators like your most or your egg alert would show up there. If there are any allergies or home meds, um, I'd like to point out that the chevrons here, when the field is collapsed, is pointing to the right. And when a field is uh, expanded, it is pointing down. It seems pretty straightforward, but that does become relevant uh, later on in some of the order sets. They can get a little bit confusing with the collapsed and the expanded fields. So always something to take a note of. For our patient, usually the home meds need to be reconciled in eMERGE upon admission if that's the route of entry for our patient. There are pharmacy technicians that that is their primary role. Um, if that is not done by the farm techs, it does fall back to nursing. Oftentimes, this is still a growing area for our team. Uh, it is new for us as well. So a lot of our clinicians have had to learn how to enter their own home meds. This is really important, actually, as a piece of the patient navigation when it comes to discharge and creating your med scripts and your med reconciliation. And I'll point that out when we get there, too. Um, but that is something to note. So we're actually going to come and create some home meds on our patient. We just click on this title here. This can only be done in the nursing system, so it does bump you into here. Um, if our patient had any PharmaNet history, if they were a real person, that would be listed here, at which point you can click and load your data. It's fairly straightforward and user-friendly. I quite like it. Um, because our patient doesn't have any data, they're not real, we're just going to click on name and we're going to add them by name. So we'll add a couple meds here. As you can see here, uh, there's a plus. You always want to exhaust all the pluses in the system um, until you get to the lowest common denominator, which is your order string. So we're going to do this. I'll show you what happens if you don't go all the way down. So this patient is on Ramipril um, and they take five milligrams BID. We're going to just click on that. As you can see, it makes it purple. There's question marks here. Uh, the system does not like that. So we have to come on in and manually put in. It thinks uh, whatever product no longer <laughs> available. We'll work through that. Um, so the system thinks that, you know, you have your Ramipril, it's a five milligram tablet, but you haven't told us how many tablets this patient takes, how often, how do they take it, um, when do they take it. So that's the information that it's looking for. So we're going to say they take five milligrams PO BID. Uh, they're not a PRN. Now that I've put in all the necessary info, it's happy and it's turned to a check mark. Again, we can go back, we can enter our new meds by name. So I'm going to go metformin. I'm going to go down here, all the way down, exhaust my pluses, um, and select the lowest common denominator. I'll do one more for fun here, levothyroxin, just because I'm not sure what's going to happen with this Ramipril when we try to reconcile it. So I've entered my meds. 
when I go down to save, it's going to give me an error saying, who did you confirm these with? Uh, I can go through one by one and put in the source here. There is an asterisk, and that generally man, uh, indicates a mandatory field, both in the nursing system and the physician system. I like to do them all at once. I like little uh, tips and tricks. So I'm going to come up here and just click on this check mark. That's going to select all my meds in my system. And then I'm going to come down to my action bar in the nursing interface that's down in the bottom. Uh, and I can click the source here. We have confirmed this with our patient. We're OK with that. And now that's listed the source as the patient on all of these meds. Now we're happy with our list. We'll save it. Uh, we don't have any forms to print from this, so we'll cancel out of that screen. Now it's bumped us back into the physician screen. And as you can see, our meds are listed here. Uh, they are confirmed. We have our purple Ramacryl. So we'll see what happens when we reconcile that. Uh, the other thing often missed from nursing uh, on admission, at least in a timely matter, is a patient wait. This is required for a lot of the physician order entries. So to do that, you're going to come up to your menu here and click on clinical data. Again, this is going to bring you to your nursing interface. You can come down here to wait, put in your wait, and hit enter. Once we save that, our wait has shown up in the corner here. We're happy. We're ready to go. So now we're going to go to our orders tab. We need to do some order entry. We have a new admission. Once we come here, as you can see, there's a bunch of different green sort of headings and subheadings. It's fairly minute in the shade differences, but it is important to note that does come back later in the system as well. In the uh, order entry module, there is a current tab. So if there are current orders, they would open up to here. Because there are no orders that exist on this chart, it assumes I want to enter my new orders, at which point it's just going to open up my favorites here. You can see it's selected because it's a little, a little bit greener than the other ones. As you can see, I have a red tab here. That means that there is outstanding work to do. Uh, that is another consistent feature throughout the system. If there's something red, that means it wants more information or it wants you to do a task. So my reconcile tab is here. That's where I can do uh, my home med reconciliation. And then the transfer module is over here, and I will definitely go over that later. This is um, definitely a point of uh, learning. Uh, it's a high learning curve for many of our clinicians. The transfer from paper to electronic is a little bit clunky, and um, it does require you to really slow down and pay attention to what you're doing. I just want to point out buried in here, there's a little arrow. So if there's any historical orders, they would be here. And then there is another form of order entry, which is called a hold queue, which we'll, we will go over as well. For now, I actually want to I want to exhaust the red in the system. I want to reconcile it. So we're going to come over here to reconcile. Uh, as you can see, our home meds are over here on the left, and then our visit meds, if there were any, would start uh, to list down here on this side. For our first reconciliation, we have to do each of these individually. Um, later on in the system, there will be a continue and stop all buttons on both sides. All right, didn't give us trouble with that Ramaprel. Um, let's say I wanted to change the dose of the patient's furosemide. They came in, they have CHF. I can just click on this field. Anywhere my mouse turns into like a hand or into a, where is it? None of these work for that. But anywhere it turns into a hand or it turns into this little eye, that generally means you can click and edit that field. So I want to double her dose of furosemide. We're just going to click on it, hit 80 and enter. Now it's highlighted in yellow and it says it's changed over here uh, and it's just highlighting that change there. I'm happy with my med reconciliation. I'm going to go ahead and do my admission order set. Um, 
In the order entry module, you almost always work left to right. So keeping that in mind, we're in reconcile. Uh, if we go over here, we can just add our new order set right away. We don't need to pin these off and come back in and do anything. So we're just going to click on add new. And again, it's going to open up to my favorites tab here. And these are my favorites. They have stars that I have highlighted. You can unhighlight them and highlight them at any time. If I just wasn't sure what I wanted, I could go in and look at individual orders here by clicking on orders, or I can go in and look at all the sets. Um, it is always recommended to use the sets. They have uh, invisible or buried orders in them for safety features. They have directions to nursing, to pharmacy, to dietary, uh, to registration, and those are all different modules. So it is important to stick with these guys and get used to them. Um, if the clinician isn't sure what set to use because, hey, there's a lot of them, uh, fear not. They do have access to a document. It is uh, called the favorites document, and it is by specialty suggested favorites for order sets, for widgets, and for documents. So I definitely suggest they reference that. Um, they do have access to that if they're not sure what to pull out of this system, because it is overwhelming. For now, we're going to use my preferred form of order entry, which is the search feature. It's definitely a work in process. Um, I'm going to search admit. These are all the associated admission order sets here. <clears throat> There's lots of different uh, diagnoses, situations, uh, procedures that require these different admission order sets. We're going to do a very general basic one. As you can see, once I click on that title, it's going to warn me I haven't done my COVID screen. Every admission needs to do that. And then it's going to expand that admission order set. Again, you have your headers here with various colors of green and gray. And you have red in the system, which indicates more information is required, at which point you come into the order and satisfy the asterisks. So we have uh, CHF. Let's do CHF as the admission diagnosis today. Once I filled out the mandatory fields, the order goes from red to green. So that's your visual cue that you've done your job here. But if you do have more info that you wanted to add to an order and you don't see the field that is appropriate, there is this little blip on almost all the little order sections and that is your expand uh, button. Once you expand that out, it reveals all the hidden fields wherein you can put whatever necessary info you want. Again, this is kind of visually exhausting. That is the function of these buttons is to keep it a little bit less cluttered and a little bit less overwhelming to scroll through. So we're gonna close that up again. Um, again, working through the order set, I can put whatever orders I want in, but I do have to put in the red ones, although if the physician uh, chooses to decline that, they can just uh, deselect that order. It's not recommended, though. Um, these are based uh, on the most commonly ordered and necessary info on our paper PPOs. And um, as I mentioned previously, there are hidden buried orders in these order sets that are uh, built in as safety features. So I've come down to the most section and I'm a specialty provider and I have no idea what a most is. Um, I don't know what to do here. So anytime you see a P with a bubble around it, that means that's the associated protocol. Once I click on that, it opens up this info for me. And then uh, fear not, I know what to put in this field. So I'm just gonna put my patient as a C2. Again, this order is still red. I've not satisfied all the asterisks. Neither of these are selected because neither are green. I need to notify uh, or indicate whether they're capable or not. So yes, they're capable. It's turned green. It's turned green. Everything is happy. Uh, as we know on the most form, there are lots of different fields where you can specify specific interventions. So 
When in doubt, again, if I don't know where to put that info, I'm going to expand my order out. Here is my associated information, and then all these buttons I can toggle on and off whether I want them or not. Again, green means go. That means it's selected. Uh, none of these have an asterisk, so I can address whatever I want and then move on from there. Down here in the diet module, this is where that info on whether the chevron is sideways or facing down is important. So a lot of the times our clinicians come in and they want to order an NPO diet um, and they see this heading and it's not there and they're like, what do I do? Um, because these order sets have so much info, again, lots of fields that aren't always used have been collapsed. Um, so you just need to click on it and expand, and then all of your orders show up there. Let's say I want them NPO at midnight for a diagnostic exam, um, but I still want them to get a tray. It is only 9.30 in the morning, so they should get a tray until then. Um, that's where my general diet decision support tool is here. It's red. It wants a diet type. So I'm just going to put in uh, general once I've put that info in, it turns green and it opens reflex orders. So this is a good example of those hidden or buried orders that come up when you give the info that you need. This is what goes to the dietary module down in the kitchen. And to note, our cutoff times for the orders are buried in the title here. Uh, this is also another order that's a very safety feature that our clinicians oftentimes are like, I don't know what this is, I don't care, I don't want to order that. They come and deselect that. Um, not recommended again because this is what the order that allows nursing the ability to adjust a diet if required for a patient. Um, whereas maybe previously we just went ahead and did that. Um, the system really puts in place um, the legislation and the direction that is required to keep our practice sort of autonomous. So um, that's what that order is. And oftentimes those reflex orders are involving that sort of content. So again, we've come back down here to a bunch of collapsed fields. The chevrons are facing right. You can open them if you want anything in them. I like to point out here, um, activity, adjust if it's not as tolerated. Uh, vitals, adjust if the protocol is inappropriate. Again, if you don't know the protocol, you can click on it there. So our orders oftentimes for these sections are now by variance. Uh, nursing acts on a protocol or on a normal expectation, so as tolerated. Um, so you only need to place these if you want sort of uh, restriction or bed rest or if you want something that is against protocol. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's say I do want vitals. I'm not happy with this frequency. As you can see here, there's this little plus button that again means that there are buried options here. So once I click on it, it allows me to put in whatever option I want. Uh, again, I'm not happy with any of these. I can select any of these order strings and here I turn into this little I character, meaning I can click and adjust that as I like. So I'm going to do Q3H. Once I type that in, it selects the most appropriate one in the search terms. I can click on that or press enter and now that's changed. I can also change the start time if I want by clicking on this field. I can make them start at 6 p.m. for whatever reason, uh, and there, that's changed there. I have my protocol. I have interventions associ or instructions associated with this as well for different, um, for different situations. Again, there's that plus with some buried options here. Um, measurements is a good one to highlight. So weight, if you put weight in here, nothing will come up. Uh, this is a good example of where the search system is not very, uh, it's not perfect. It is manually built. So there is always suggestions welcome to the team. Um, but if a, if a clinician wants a weight entered, they have to search measurements up here. 
Then they can click in this order set it's included. I want this every seven days, so I'm going to click in here and change that to Q seven days. Here's my happy selection. It's still red, though, because I haven't satisfied the asterisk, which is what do you want measured? Now that I've done that, it's turned green and we're happy. So that is how you order a weight, which is a common question. I believe probably most of our clinicians know how to do that at this point since uh, go live. But if it comes up, you can save the day with that information. I'd like to also point out that these order sets are pretty much the lowest common denominator for that type of order set, the general admission and that population. So a 29 year old female. Um, if the order that is wanted is not available in the order set, you can always come up here and search. Um, as you can see, this number has been growing and queuing our orders in the background, so we're not going to lose any of our work if we go back in here and search an additional thing. I do recommend doing that after you've finished your order set, though, for simplicity's sake. So I'm just going to order a couple different things here to build our patient, uh, order our patient up. We have CHF. So now, yeah, red to green. Down here is our IV therapy. And again, we have an expanded field and then our fluids is collapsed. That chevron is pointing right. Um, so we're going to go here. I'm going to change this to lock when drinking well. I think that's a nice one. Uh, yep, we want a second line and we're going to do it in IV lock. Now we can click on our fluids and select which, whichever one we want. Again, this is the most basic ones. If it's not in this set, you can always go up here and search fluids. Uh, there's a variety of modules that are available to be used. For now, I'm going to do, uh, I'd like a continuous infusion versus a bolus. So I'm going to select this order string, uh, but I'd like it a little bit more than this. So I'll just click on this number and change that to a 150. Now you can see that's changed. It's created a conflict for me, which we'll look at in a little while. I have my VTE risk support. So if I put low in here, the only associated intervention is that the RN needs to encourage ambulation. If I put moderate in here, as you can see, it wants more information. So is there any contraindication? Are they bleeding? No. Um, and then what option do you want? Because each of these options have different meds, uh, different doses associated to them. So we have a medical patient. Down here in our reflex orders from that, we have medications based on weight. And again, if that's ordered or entered, it's going to be right here. It's 80 kilograms. So this is an appropriate um, category for them. I like anoxaparin and based on these guidance, uh, guiding principles here, the renal function is good. This is what I'm going to give to my patient. If I wanted TEDs or SCDs, I could do that here. So let's do SCDs once for fun. Uh, our medication modules are below that. So we have our analgesics, uh, acetaminophen, opioids, antiemetics, and insomnia. Again, the bare minimum. Once you open one of these, there are dose ranges here. Um, uh, this patient has chronic pain, let's say. So we want to give them some scheduled Tylenol. It's important to note that this is a scheduled versus a PRN. This is also scheduled, but this is a different dose versus this. So we'll give them 500 milligrams four times a day um, with an opioid to top up that PRN pain management. We'll give them Hydromorph uh, to point out. There are different formulations again here, and you have to order strings by formulation. So for TAB, uh, I don't want to give it scheduled. I'd like to give it PRN, uh, one to two milligrams, either one or three hours. This is the most appropriate one. Let's actually change that to Q4H though. And then I'm going to come down here to this hydromorph uh, again, scheduled versus PRN, one to uh, two, two to four. So this is a, a nicer dose, but this is way too frequent. So we'll go down here and change that to Q4H as well. 
Everybody needs help sleeping in the hospital, so small mercy. We're going to give them a scheduled dose with this range each night. Down here is our buried interprofessional referrals. Everybody is kind of collapsed all together here, which is quite nice. And this is all your allied health. And then you have physician consults in here. You can consult teams, you can consult specific physicians. To note, if you do consult a team though, you do need to know which provider is on that day. Uh, this is the end of our order set. It has this very thin green line here. And then down here, as you can see, there are uh, suggested order sets that are commonly ordered with this type of order set. So let's say our, our patient here smokes and drinks and is diabetic. Um, so we have a couple different modules that we need to fill out here. I don't really want to click and fill out all of these one by one. I kind of want to just stack them all together separately. And you can do that by using this multi-select tool here if you have a complicated patient and quite a few order sets to select. So we'll do the subcutaneous, uh, the alcohol withdrawal, and the nicotine th uh, replacement therapy. I can now go up here and working left to right again, uh, I'm going to pull all those order sets out from this search. Okay, discontinue. So this is a warning in the system. That's fine. I'm going to pull all these out and I'm just going to stack them one on top of another. Now I'm not going to actually do these, but I just do want to see how they do lay out. There is a deselect here if you want to deselect any of the pre-selected fields in an order set. And then our admission order set is here. So you can see that they just sort of stack them one on top of another here. We have our admission order set, which we did not deselect, and then the other three. So working left to right again, we have our preview tab here. Under the reconcile, it's only going to show us the reconciliation and changes that we've done. The new orders won't show up here in this preview pane, but they will show up here if I go and hit submit. Um, once you try to submit orders, it's going to give you things called first dose warnings. And essentially that means for daily meds that are scheduled for nine, uh, we're ordering these at 945. So what do you want to do? Do you want to give them a dose now or is tomorrow OK in uh, almost 24 hours? So I'm going to say nope now and then you can make a decision for the next day as well. So if it was uh, 9.45 p.m., for example, I could give them a dose now and then I could skip the next day uh, and give it the next morning. For now, we're just going to save that uh, now, save, and tomorrow is fine for the love of thy rocks. And here's that conflict I mentioned to you guys, and this is a bug in the system with the pharmacy um, when you change the order, the rate. Um, this it has gone in a ticket to the team to be resolved, but all the clinician has to do is override that at this point. And then that allows nursing to um, scan that and populate it on their MAR. So let's say looking back on this, I'm actually not sure about some of this stuff. I'd like to remove it. I actually don't need to enter my PIN. I can just click out of that field and I can go to whatever order I want to remove and exit off. So now I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit save. I put in my pin um, and then if I come up and hit save again, <clears throat> the system gets confused. It doesn't know what to do. So anytime you pin, you have to do pin and then enter on your keyboard. Now it's happy. It's going to process those orders. It's pinged me back into our current order tab. Um, and here we are, everything is listed by heading. If I wanted to discontinue an order, for example, I can do that here. I just go over here to the ordered and click stop. It's going to ask for my reason, that's fine. If I want to change a dose, I can. I can click on that med and click on that number and I can increase that for my patient. It's going to ask me, do I want to stop the old order right now? Sure. And we'll start the new one at uh, the scheduled med time at one. Or I could do it now. 
So we'll save that again. It's queuing these up here because anytime you touch an order, even if you are the provider that ordered it, it's going to ask you to sign off your edits. Uh, the same is true if anybody else touches these orders, even nursing down to the frequency intervention in their uh, workflow sheet, it's going to come back to your sign list. So oftentimes clinicians are frustrated because their orders are coming back three or four times in their sign list. Um, that's because they're the captain of the ship. The system gives them total control and it asks them to sign off and um, confirm or um, yeah, give permission for any changes that are made to their orders. So we're going to submit those, pin and enter. If I wanted to stop multiple orders here, I could do that as well by editing multiple. I, I can select the action that I want to do, at which point I can stop um, however many orders I want to select. Once I'm happy with that, I come up to my check mark here. It's going to ask me, when do you want to do it? That's pre-selected pre to now, uh, my reason. So I save. And again, come up here to submit, pin, and enter. So now those actions are being done. So that is how to do current order entry. If I wanted to create a hold queue, I can. So these are orders where um, they're event specific. The clinician creates essentially a heading and then under that heading they have a little goodie bag of orders and those orders can be activated by another clinician or by nursing at any time that is appropriate based on the direction from the clinician's heading. So we're going to create a new event. A good example of what these are used for are pre-op daycare surgery orders. They're very useful because they uh, um, attach to the patient up here at the MRN level. So they can be created on any account that exists for that patient. They will stick with that patient wherever they go in the system, doesn't matter what registration account they're on, and they can be unpacked on any appropriate registration account. So these can also be used for direct admits. Um, I, I like them um, also even post-procedure if there's any changes that a clinician wants or if they want it in reference to an event that happens in a patient's status, what have you. We're going to do our pre-op orders here. And anytime there's a date, you can put T and hit enter, and that will populate your date for today. Uh, this is going to be in, for example, four days, so I'm going to put T plus four and hit enter, and that's going to pre-populate that data there as well. Once I've created my header, I can go ahead and add new. I have a uh, pre-op anesthesia order set that is favorited. Uh, this is the one I want to use, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. I'd like to point out again, there are these accordion buttons and they are really helpful here. If you are just getting used to your orders, you can click on that and see everything that is buried in your order set. It is nice for this one on some of the larger order sets. It can be a little bit tedious, um, uh, but it is useful. So we'll cruise through this. We'll do a BGM when my patient arrives and a stat INR. We'll insert an IV with some continuous fluid, no to a second site. I'm going to do ringers, IV continuous. Uh, we'll do that at 75. Uh, let's give them some Ativan for their anxiety and then some Ventolin for their uh, airway. I'm happy with that. I think I'll also give them an antibiotic as a prophylactic. So I can just come up here and search ceftriaxone. Select my order. Now, none of these are a one-time order. As you can see, they're all scheduled, but that doesn't matter. I can come in here and I can change this to once. And then I'm actually going to schedule that one-time dose for pre-op. These are uh, fields where they're missing the asterisk, but they are mandatory. Uh, you need to give your order group, which is pre-op day of surgery, 
and then your indication, which is prophylactic treatment. So now I think I'm happy with that. We can come over and process our orders and it will stack them one on top of the other. As you can see, we have our order set and then our septriaxone here. We can go over to submit. It's going to give us that ringers issue again. Uh, it interacts with septriaxone. So I'm going to override this and nursing is going to monitor it because that is what we do. Again, this is our maintenance warning. It's a bug. We're just going to override that. Pin and enter. And now we have a whole queue all created here that is packed up and ready to go. So when we go back to our current orders view, there is that hold queue button here. It has a little yellow flag. The same is true for the transfer module. Um, so anytime anybody leaves this chart and comes back into it, you can double click on a title. Uh, to open it as well. It's going to warn you that those orders exist, so it's going to direct you where you want to go. We're going to go back into the main orders for now. The same is true for the transfer module. If uh, that exists on a file, it is going to warn a clinician of it when they open the chart or nursing or anybody uh, that those exist, so they really can't be overlooked. So those are the first two ways that clinicians can do order entry. The last way is under the transfer module. <clears throat> so there are mandated times in a patient uh, stay and the trajectory of their stay where it is mandated by legislation for clinicians to review all of the existing orders and all of the existing medications on file or that have been ordered. Uh, oftentimes these auto stop. For example, when somebody goes from emergency to admission to the floor, uh, reconciliation is physically uh, resembled by the yellow sheets that are used in emergency for orders get changed to the white sheets that are used for order entry on the floor. Um, and then the transfer form is printed for med reconciliation. At midnight post uh, transfer, those emerge orders are supposed to be suspended, at which time you go to the new admission orders. So that is that function, uh, but made electronic. Other examples of where that is used is any change in level of care. So going from acute to um, ICU or ICU to acute, um, when somebody delivers a baby, when somebody goes down through the OR, those are all other examples where reconciliation and the transfer function are mandatory for use. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you come into the transfer module, uh, it auto stops everything. It cleans the slate, everything is cleared, and it allows you to either continue it or to start new. Up here at the top of the module, it does have a field. There is no asterisk. This is for communication to the shift coordinator um, if you have a preference where that patient is to go. For most specialty admissions, that's going to be pretty clear. But for something like a medical patient, if they prefer 5 South or if they have been there many times, you can indicate that there. Again, this is just for communication purposes. This doesn't go to registration. It's not going to guarantee anything, um, but it is there if the clinician wants it. So, as I previously pointed out, the headers uh, are very minute in their color change, and this is a good example where being close, uh, keeping a close eye on that is important. So, the top header here is ever so slightly darker than the headers below it. As you can note, there are continue and stop all in each of the headers. So, if I hit this continue all up here, it will continue every order below it, including all of my medications in all of the sections. Stop all is by default. But if I come down here and I hit the continue all in this section, it just continues that cardiology order. 
So it's really important to pay close attention what header you're in and what that impacts. I do recommend people come down and do this one by one um, because it is going to give you the most control and most accurate and safe way for you to adjust your orders. Having said that, if you always continue all the labs, which is a fair uh, practice, or you always continue all the nursing interventions, that is appropriate for sure. Again, I do recommend you do medications one by one. So we're going to continue all the home meds. Uh, I like this Tylenol. It's helping this patient. So we'll continue that and the Hydromorph. But we don't want the ringers. Uh, we'll continue this Opaclone. So that is where my reconciliation is. If I want any of these to continue now, I can do that here. So these orders are going, it, for example, they're going to also be placed into like a little goodie bag. And when the physician or the, uh, the patient is received into whatever area is appropriate for these orders to be activated, the nurse is then going to receive and activate them. So for example, if you want something to stop now, like I don't want this NPO to continue, I wanna take it off right now, I can click that box there and it will stop upon save, as opposed to these say, continue upon transfer. So that's another option here for uh, control on the timing of how soon these orders are activated. These will not be activated immediately upon save. You're creating a goodie bag. This is what sticks to the patient when they go to whoever they're received. So I'm happy with this reconciliation. I'm going to add some new orders. Um, we'll do a post-op admission order set. They've gone through surgery. Again, because it's an admission order set, it's gonna warn me about my COVID screen. It's really excited about that. As you can see, um, it's, it's a fine line indifference, but my previous admission order is listed here. So this is going to populate the existing orders um, in the appropriate field if they're there. I'm going to deselect that because I don't need to do another admission order. Um, but let's change the MRP, for example. We'll change this to my buddy Jim. And do we want it now or, for example, in the morning? So let's do it in the morning. We'll do it tomorrow. So T plus one at 0700. Now that I've put in the appropriate info, it's going to change the MRP on this file tomorrow morning at seven o'clock. If this were the live system. Um, my most is here. The order exists. Again, as you can see, this heading is collapsed. So if I wanted to do a new most, if I wanted to do a new diet, I would have to open this heading, at which point I can do, um, because this is a post-op admission order set, this is what is ordered commonly as the diet at that point. You can see my little plus buttons are here for more options as well. So we'll leave this dressing order. My patient can shower on day two. I want them to do bed rest with um, bathroom privileges, and we'll do that for 24 hours. Let's elevate their affected extremity as well, whatever that may be. Um, if you wanted to insert or manage a urinary catheter, you could do that as required, as ordered or ongoing. Our vitals are here, is by protocol, I'm happy with that. Labs are here, uh, this is what exists on the patient, so let's expand that. Uh, it's all the same stuff, so I'm not gonna add anything here. Diagnostics, same thing, we'll do an urgent ECG right now. We have our IV line here with our fluid here, um, and that populates this in the NG loss replacement module in this order set. Here's our VTE risk that exists, but since we're post-op, we're going to redo this so they have a moderate to high risk, but they're not bleeding, and they're now a surgical patient. 
Um, this is the appropriate weight class, so we're going to go to the enoxaparin. Oh, I see that it's already, or, oh, it's discontinued here, so we will reorder that. Again, our meds are here. Uh, we just have reflux and insomnia. I'm happy with what we have. And then we have the symptom management module for surgical patients, uh, which has the pain meds in it. This is pre-selected. As you can see, I already have scheduled meds, uh, so I'm going to deselect this. And they have their hydromorph. This is discontinued. We'll give them morphine instead, um, but we'll change this to Q4H. Again, referrals, consults, suggested order sets that go with this. So I'm happy with this. We're going to preview our orders. Here it displays it much nicer. So you have all your new orders here. Everything you continued previously is laid out here. And then the orders that you stopped are here, noting that this one is going to be stopped now because we selected that feature. We're happy with this. I'm going to submit. Um, uh, that's fine. Pin and enter. Now it's going to bring us. Oh, didn't like that. Ooh. -ooh. Let's see if it. Uh, great. So I got a error ring there um, and lost my work. Awesome. So let's go through and see how fast I can do this. Sorry, folks, this has not happened before. But just so I can show you what it looks like. Do a different order set. Okay. So not the same robust transfer that we just did, but now it exists. Um, you have your yellow flag here indicating that. I can go in any time. I can change what I uh, put down for an option. I can add new orders. So let's say I want to add um, an antibiotic. I can do that here. 500 PO uh, standard. And we'll submit that. Again, anytime I've touched an order, for example, this ECG, I changed the reconciliation, I would need to pin and enter that. So now when I come back, you can see this is continued and we now have our amoxicillin here as a new order. I can X out of there. So we have three different forms of order entry going on here, depending on the situation um, and how appropriate it is. This transfer module has to be used if there's any change in registration to note out. Um, so for example, when they go from an ER file to uh, admit file for sure. So we've done our order entry. Now we're gonna come in and do some documentation. Um, it shows me my favorites here that I have starred. If I wanted to see all of them, I just can click on show all. These are all the documents that exist. If I didn't have any favorites, um, this is what I would see when I sign in. So let's say I open a document and oh my goodness, I did not want to chart on this patient at all. Um, if I just close this or save it or abandon it for whatever reason and I leave it as a draft, um, it's going to save it in the background as a draft. 
the system is going to notify me to sign it continuously because it's going to think that there's valuable information in here that I desperately want to file in the patient's chart and drafts do not get electronically filed once a patient is discharged. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to delete my errant document by going to the cogwheel. Again, anytime there is a setting or an action that you want to do that's administrative, it's generally buried in a cogwheel. So I'll come here and I'll cancel the document. And now it's gone. It doesn't exist. My sign list is empty. I'm happy. Um, let's say I opened a document and it's just the wrong document. I do want to chart on this patient, but it's just the wrong one. I can come up here and click on the title and I can go to whichever document I want. It's going to delete that draft and then it's going to open my new document. So let's say I've come to my document. It's just got this white screen. I'm clicking on it madly and it's not letting me do anything. Uh, oftentimes in the documents, you need to come up here to this body button, which has different headers or to this heading here. Once you click on it, you can expand whichever appropriate section it is, uh, is indicated and then toggle your assessment. Um, if I, for instance, was not done with this or I needed to save it and come back to it, I can save it as a draft. It will notify me in my sign list. Um, as, as you can see here, I can go to it and I can go to edit or I can go to submit it. For now, I'm just going to leave it because I'm going to show you. You can just come back and click on it here and open it back up. If I wanted to preview what this looked like in print view, um, just to get, wrap my head around what it would look like as a report, I can toggle on that up here between draft and print view. You can just click back and forth. Let's say I'm happy, okay, this is the extent of this uh, documentation. Now I'm gonna come up and sign it. It requires that you put in your specialty. So today I'm a cardiologist. Uh, most of our clinicians will have this pre-filled out. Again, now it is green because it is selected. Um, down here, I can CC copies to anybody. Green means go, and I can click again to deselect it. I can add anybody as well. So we're changing providers. I'm going to add Jim to my note. I'll go, go up here pin and enter. Again, your PIN is your signature in the system. So uh, that is how you sign your documentation. This is now going to take a hot minute to go over and file down into the chart here under the provider notes tab. Oh, here we are. It still says draft. So uh, in a Meditech minute, it's going to switch to signed. If I want to view my document, I can come out over here, click on my little piece of paper, and there you have it. Any of the documents existing, if they existed below this, would exist here and I could just click through each individual document and view them. At this point, I do like to point out for um, clinicians, a new skill again is this problem list. Um, it is important when it comes to documentation though. So if I click on this heading, it opens my module to augment my problem list. And this is your diagnostics or your ICD codes. This is based off of ICD-10. My understanding is that because MSP billing is based off of ICD-9 code still, there is software in the system that is used that will translate that for the clinicians uh, when they're doing billing. For now, we're going to put in um, some problems. So chest pain is an active problem. CHF is definitely an active problem. Let's say anxiety, ooh, anxiety in all caps. So our patient is anxious, but they have a history of that. So we'll put that under both. Uh, they have a history of depression. Uh, now let's say I have my favorites list and it's robust here. I can click on the star and it will show me some of my favorites. So let's say they have uncontrolled diabetes and hypertension as well, and they have a history of stroke. Let's say they've had an appendectomy. 
in their history and they've had a cholecystectomy in their history. Now I can go in here and I can change any of these. So this hypertension is a chronic issue, chronic medical issue. I can put in my plan here. So medical management. Um, I can note if there's a family history as well. Again, I can go in here. This diabetes is chronic. Uh, anxiety is also chronic. We have suspected CHF going on here. That's what we think is going on. And they have a family history of it. And let's say they have acute chest pain. We're going to change the surgical history here to the surgical history. So we'll change the category to surgical. Same with the coli is surgical. So as you can see, there are different ways you can populate this and use it. Um, depression, we're doing psychotropic uh, management and counseling. That's also in the family history. Woo. So if I put in the work here, uh, I'd like to point out actually also that you can rank these problems. So. We're going to make chest pain number one, CHF number two, hypertension three, four, five. I'm happy with that. We're going to save it. It's going to ask us who has this family history for each of these things. So if I had a really sick mom, I can note her here and then toggle her on for all of those things. So we'll save that. Once we come back to our documentation tab, for example, if we're doing a handover note, it's going to take all that info and all that work that we put in and populate it in the fields here. So it's definitely worth the work to master. If you have a number of comorbidities that you frequently work with, again, you can favorite those things uh, or those ICD codes specifically. Um, and you can use this for your problem management. Uh, you can drop in here in your documentation a table of your problems by inserting formatted data. If I search problems, uh, all active problems and insert, it's going to give me a table with all of this information too. And there's a, a variety of ways that we can drop the information in here. So if you can create that data, that is the point of, of having that there, is that you can then take that data and plug it in wherever you want. For now, I'm not going to save this document. Yes. So the last action here up here is the discharge module. Uh, this is an interdisciplinary discharge plan of care. It can be started right upon admission. It is a living document. There are some gray fields here that the clinician cannot augment, and that is generally because they're other provider focused, so nursing or pharmacy here. All these blue fields are fields that um, can be addressed by the clinician. So here in the title, this says MRP estimated discharge date. This is a pretty sick patient, so I think it'll be in the next maybe 10 days. Uh, barriers are going to be query dialysis and housing. Um, so there are four generally, I don't know if mandated is the correct word, but strongly recommended sections to be completed on discharge. Uh, the first one is reconciling your problems here. The second is reconciling your medications and then creating scripts as you need. The third one is your discharge disposition, where your patient is going. And then the fourth is your discharge order. As you can see, these have asterisks and they're red and it says required and it's bolded here. So this is very much highlighted, whereas these two are not. Um, there are some instances where your patient may not have medication or problems to reconcile. Um, those are few and far between though. So the next section here is to reconcile problems. You can click on this field or the heading. It's gonna open your action box. 
there's a bug in the system. It doesn't load the visit problems properly, but you just go over here to all problems. Uh, so chest pain, we have resolved that. CHF, we're going to keep it active and active and active and active. Our patient is still sick, but these are chronic issues. Um, the only time that you use this delete column is if this is entered as an administrative error, if this never existed on your patient. So we're going to save that. Once we've done that, it shows that our reconciliation is complete. The next section is toggleable. It is for interventions that were completed on their stay. Uh, my understanding is it will tie into MSP in the future. Uh, next is our med reconciliation. So oftentimes, um, this may get confused. It says no action, and it may they may think that it says no action is needed. Uh, this says no action has been taken on these meds. So again, you can click anywhere in this field, and there's our continue and stop all buttons. Um, I recommend continuing all and stopping all. Uh, for this one, though, we changed the dose, so I'm going to stop the home med. It's changed and I'm going to continue this medication. Because this is a new dose, a new medication, it has said, hey, you need to create a script for this. So this is where that home med entry is important. If a clinician goes ahead and enters all the patient's home meds as new medications on the visit stay, if they continue these upon discharge to do their discharge reconciliation, it will force them cr to create scripts for every single one of those meds. So uh, if it's a patient with two meds, I mean, that's not a big deal. But if it's a patient who's quite sick at home and has 20 home meds, um, creating 20 scripts, especially if it's unnecessary, uh, would be incredibly frustrating. So that is a big highlight on why that is super important uh, and how it impacts this module. So for this, um, now you can see it has a prescription. It wants some more information here. You can tell because there's this teeny tiny, teeny tiny little blip, uh, barely visible, but it is red. So once you click on it, it's going to ask you for the quantity. I prefer duration, so we're going to do three months and hit enter, and then I'll do one refill. Now that quantity asterisk is gone. If I hit exit, it's not going to save the information I put in here. I have to hit Q and exit. And now that little blip is no longer red. So the rest of these are OK. Let's say they need a script created for their metformin. They've ran out at home. I'm going to click on my little script button and I have my little red blip. I will open that up and do three months of meds with one refill. Q and exit. Now this is no longer red and I have my high lit script here, same as up here. Let's say I want to continue this Tylenol. It's been helpful for them. Again, I have my script here with my red blip. I click on the blip. I'll do three months with one refill. As you can see, it's two tabs, so it has automatically figured out the quantity. And the rest of these are fine. I'm going to stop those. Let's say I wanted to add a new med to their discharge. They had to take um, amoxicillin or what have you, an antibiotic. I'll search that in medications, select my dose, and then my most appropriate order string. So we want it three times a day for 21 days. I'm going to queue and exit now. Let's take a preview. So we've changed this, we've continued these, and we have one new prescription, and we have three scripts created. So we'll submit that. And now that we've done that, uh, we have a very colorful little section here. As you can see, we have scripts here. There is legislation currently being worked on in the College of Pharmacists 
to accept this electronic pin as the signature so that we can electronically transmit uh, scripts to pharmacy directly. Uh, that is something that will be coming, I hope, in the near future. For now, though, the physicians still need to print and sign their scripts with what is referenced as a wet signature. That's also required on consent forms um, and for mental health act forms or uh, legal forms, essentially. So they have to come up here, go to this little printer, hit transmit print. Uh, in the future, they'll transmit print here. Uh, for now, they can print their prescriptions here. There are four of them. Instead of clicking all four boxes, I'm just going to click on Rx order and pre-select them. Uh, if they are on an IH device, they can go to preview all. I highly recommend this um, because from their preview, they can hit print and it will pre-select whichever printer is most appropriate based on their location. If they're on their own device, they will have to go to print destinations and search their printer by name. So most of our unit printers are RAHW and then the prefix for your unit and then your printer number. Um, one small mercy you folks can do is having that printer name uh, very visible and readily accessible for clinicians who are using their own devices. For now, we're going to cancel out of here. We're not going to actually print anything, but this little printer icon is where they go. The next section, they can put in their next dose. So if they want to hold a med at home, say they want to hold this metformin, um, they can put the next dose to be uh, tomorrow evening. Save. Save. They only have to uh, acknowledge whichever one they want. Post-discharge orders are for labs or diagnostics. So let's say we want to do uh, a chest x-ray. Because I have an existing chest x-ray under the routine tab that exists and has not been taken yet, I can actually convert that to be an outpatient order. So we're going to do that. Once I select it, it wants more information. So we want this in three weeks. Uh, and I'm just going to satisfy the asterisks in here. So uh, CHF, uh, they are not going to be pregnant. And the DI time frame, again, is three to four weeks here. Now it's green. We're happy. We can preview our order if we want. We've added that new uh, submit. And there's that chest x-ray. Referral instructions to nursing. So uh, this can be like, please set up appointment in race clinic three weeks post discharge. It's just a narrative box. Uh, standalone forms. So this is your work release, school release, work safe BC. So let's say you need to release this patient from uh, work and school. So we'll do both due to illness. Uh, from today to three weeks from today, T plus 21 and enter. Once those field, fields are filled out, you can hit OK and you have your form queued up here. Uh, instruction sheets from home. So this is a narrative box. This is for any existing instruction sheets that uh, IH has already um, published. There are a number of them online. Um, there's instruction sheets for people who have a new diagnosis. So a CHF info sheet, for example, head injury. Um, yeah, there are post-op instruction sheets. Whichever one that exists can be referenced here. Then you have your additional patient instructions. So this is, again, a narrative box. So uh, no driving for one week. Um, uh, leave dressing on for three weeks. Do not let it get wet. Whatever you want, you can type it out there. The second to last field is your disposition. So the most common ones we'll use is they're going home and taking care of themselves or they're going home with home support. 
they're going to another hospital, they're going to assisted living or to a facility. There are other ones here for different situations. Um, we're just going to send them home to self-care. At this point, uh, as you can see, we've done a lot of work on this. I always, always, always recommend that a clinician save their info. It takes a half a second. Um, you don't have to cancel, don't save and close, just hit save before you file your order. This is because when you file a discharge order, uh, we'll do it tomorrow, um, and you can put whatever instructions there after patient poops or walks or what have you. Um, it's going to file it in your current orders tab. And if a transfer module exists on that client, anytime you file a current order, it's going to automatically ping you into the transfer module and ask you what you want to do with the orders you just filed when they get transferred. It's going to ask you to reconcile it or give a decision. Unfortunately, right now the discharge order is being worked on, so it is buried in the system, but uh, it is set to auto stop upon transfer. As a reminder, that is a function of this module. That's what it does. It's supposed to clear the slate. So uh, if they want that discharge order to stick to their patient, we'll pretend that this is it. They have to manually hit continue and then they've touched it. They need to submit, pin and enter it. This is a step that is often missed in daycare surgery because they're doing their post-op orders right away and then their discharge orders immediately after that. It will ping them into the transfer module um, to reconcile that discharge order. And a lot of times folks get that, that uh, end up on that screen and wonder why they're there and they don't know why. So when in doubt, if you are automatically redirected to the transfer module if it exists on that patient it's asking you what you want to do with the orders that you just entered the last few uh, things i'd like to show you here so clinicians oftentimes would like to look at the nursing interface to look at our mar or to look at our worksheet how we document on it so to look at MARS, you can go to the medications tab here, uh, and then you can click on this little section here on your current visit. If MedAdmins exist on that patient in a recent time, they would exist here. This would be black and bolded. Otherwise, you can go directly to the MAR and review previous medication administration based on the dates. And close out there. Um, and then if the clinician wants to look at the nursing flow sheet, so it would be the same as if they referenced our 24 hour flow sheet on paper, um, they would come down here to flow sheets, not to nursing, uh, to flow sheets, and they would change their view to the specialty care desktop. Then it's going to bring you into the nursing system, and these are all of our little sections we document in. They can change the frequency here as well, which is helpful because that can get overwhelming. If they want to look at nursing notes that are separate from flow sheets, this is where they would find the notes or the separate assessments are in here. So um, I just talked directly at you guys for an hour and a half. How are you doing? Do you have any questions? Feel free to unmute if you have any, or you can pop into chat and I'm happy to um, read off of there. Everybody's tired this morning, hey? Okay, um, well, if there are no questions, um, I heartily, heartily thank you for your time and for your patience uh, listening to me. 
I will have a few more of these sessions uh, being held. I do have drop-ins and Q&As for the clinicians, um, and that is in their email. Uh, this, as a reminder, has also been recorded, so it will be available at some point and distributed for your reference. Otherwise, I hope you folks have a wonderful day. Uh, stay positive out there, and thank you for your time. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Thank you.